You're listening to the Live Ultra Podcast, a show dedicated to exploring the minds of the individuals who take on the world's most extreme challenges. Now, here's your host, Jack Middleton. Hello and welcome to episode 5 of the Live Ultra Podcast. I'm your host Jack Middleton and in today's episode I'm joined with the second ever guest on the Live Ultra Podcast, Mr. Leo Ryan, where we are going to talk about all things human performance. So Leo Ryan is a health performance and breathing specialist. He's the founder of InnateStrength.com and has studied athletic training, health and breathing since he healed himself of asthma in 2004. After graduating with a master's from UCD in Dublin, he continued to educate himself throughout his professional career in Ireland and internationally. He's attained multiple diplomas and, and certificates from many elite personal training establishments, physical therapy and breathing schools, including the Batecchio Method, Wim Hof Instructor and the Oxygen Advantage Master Instructor Certification, all geared towards optimizing human performance through breathing. Leo's love and experience for health and physical performance has seen him research more than 50 breathing techniques and mentor directly with coaches to Olympians, UFC fighters and world champions. Leo, delighted to have you on. Welcome to the show. Uh, thanks a million, Jack. Good to be here. For sure. So we started uh, before this episode, not not really like the last guest episode <laughs> where uh, I got to know what exactly it is that leo does <laughs> and it involved getting in a very very cold ice bath <laughs> yeah we did so. uh so i'm actually gonna launch a, a a new class locally uh next month and there's nothing like it in ireland it's a combination of breathing training and exposure cold exposure so you had a little yeah. taste of what i've been uh <laughs> developing for the last while did you enjoy it for sure yeah it was a bit of a shock to the system like i've been doing a bit of cold water therapy but I didn't expect it today, so I don't think I was prepared for it. And uh, yeah, I'm still, still a bit cold now, to be honest. But uh, yes, it's definitely, it's, it's always one where it sucks that first 60 seconds, which I'm sure we'll get into later. But once you kind of accept it and relax into it, it does, it works wonders. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got to remember, like, if you immerse yourself in cold water, it hits the nervous system straight away. Right. Not only that, but every inch of your skin is then soaked in the cold water. So okay. it hits it straight away and hits it very, very powerfully. Yes. So it, it produces great changes in your system. And it also gives you a great insight into how your nervous system regulates itself. Yeah. How you are with stress of any kind. Sure. And that's why it's uh, such a great teacher. For sure. Well, look, we're going to cover cold exposure. That's That's one of the points that I do want to cover today. But just to rewind maybe from the very start so based on the research that i did do a big point that stood out to me personally is that you've gone from suffering from severe asthma relying heavily on inhalers and different medicinal treatments at the time and within a few short years uh, of breath training and and really focusing on your health you not you not only then eradicated your asthma, but you actually went on to run the Dublin City Marathon with little to no training, <laughs> with your mouth taped, which sounds insane. So like, I just kind of wanted to maybe break down that hero's journey and and see what what that journey looked like. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> it sounds bonkers. It sounds ridiculous. It doesn't. It wasn't so. quite a few short years, but I I get you. <laughs> 10 well, look, years 10 uh, years. i mean yeah where, where it started where where it started for me was a, i got to the end of the school age and i actually wanted to go into the to the army to be a cadet in the army and i got through all their interviews and i got to the final stages where it's a medical and i thought i'd be pulled with uh with my asthma yeah and i got through that part but then i was told i was colorblind i was like Jeez. right so i hit me left field and I ended up uh, studying IT. I ended up studying wow. uh, software engineering in DCU. And while I was there, it's it's a funny coincidence uh, because as I was there in DCU studying that, yeah. my asthma, which I've had since the age of three, 
really got worse and worse and worse and worse okay. and worse. And I've been in hospital a couple of times over my life as a kid with asthma, but yeah. um, but it got really bad where I would, you know, I played Gaelic football at the time. Yeah. I go train and do do my winter training, <clears throat> and on a Monday. I'd have training on a Monday evening. I could feel it in my lungs and I'd already be cancelling work for Friday Jesus. because in my mind, I had that much sickness during that time that yeah. uh, it, it just seeped into every part of my being that as soon as I started to feel my lungs go, <gasps> I, I just knew I'd be cancelling work. I'd be on another set of antibiotics. I'd be on more um, steroid tablets and I'd be on yeah. more inhalers. Yeah. So through the course of that year, I was on over 425 steroid tablets. Jesus Christ. I was on 12, I think it was 12 to 14 courses of antibiotics. Wow. Uh, and I had my inhalers as well. It's amazing. Like, it's funny when you when you talk to doctors now, there's a, there's a, a tiered level of how they give antibiotics now. Yeah. So I used to know that tiered level way back then. And I would be able to say to doctors, no, no, that one's not going to work for me because I need something more powerful this time. That's how strongly I knew the pharmaceutical <laughs> part of things with my ass. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. I was in bed for six months. Six months. Six months in total. So like when I felt good, I, I would be able to run faster and, and further than anybody at, yeah. at that time. But when I was uh, when I was ill, I was ill. And with that frequency of getting ill consistently, it just seeps yeah. into every part of your life. Yeah. Plus, then you're studying something that really you know you're not going to be any good at. So your whole life is you're, you're going well. You know, my 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 dream of what I would want in life is gone. Yeah. What I'm working for is not interesting. Oh yeah. Uh, my sport is non-existent. Like what, what the hell is it? That's what sure. I said to the to the doctor. I was like, look, I'm I'm actually thinking of going back and being a fitness instructor. You know what do you what do you yeah, think yeah, of that? Yeah. And he was sure. like, <laughs> he laughed at me. He was like, Leo. No, no, no there, there was nothing. <laughs> there was like, like you, his, his actual analogy was if we wrap you up in bubble wrap yeah. and put you away to your 25, we don't know if you're going to be better. There's nothing more we can do for you medically. It's crazy. And I left there kind of in my mind broken. I, you know, I was like, well, well fuck you. You know, there, there has yeah, to be yeah, yeah. But that was inside. I never let that out. And uh, the one thing he did was he got me an appointment with... Uh, Richard Costello, who is considered one of the top respiratory consultants in Ireland, he was in Bond. Yeah. Um, but knowing the Irish Health Service uh, back then, it would take a year before I'd get to see him. Okay. So I would just went on living my life, being sick, studying something I didn't like, yeah. uh, playing football when I could play football and sport when I could play sport, and then yeah. getting sick again. Sure. And a few weeks later, my mom rang me up and said, uh, Leo, this uh, breathing technique has come to Ireland. I heard about it on the radio. It's called the Ruteikyo Method, which yeah. is a Russian breathing technique. It was brought to Ireland by a gentleman named Patrick McKeown. Okay. And uh, she goes, look, do you, want, do you want to go for it? I was like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So I went, uh, learned it over literally with three mornings. Like That's all it took to wow. get the knowledge of what to do. And then the real work began, which was actually executing on that. So doing my daily training, okay. getting that motivation to train three times a day in breath training. Right. But when you're as sick as I was and in that much pain, motivation, you, you, you don't need to go look for it in a book. You don't need to no. find it on social media. It's, no. it's inside you. Yeah. You have that. Sure, sure. Uh, so... I started doing those techniques and recording. It was a beautiful system because it, I look at it as a very Western way to look at breathing because it's quantitative. There's yeah. a there's a measurement system. Uh, there's techniques that you do. There's a certain amount of time you do them for, and it builds day on day on day on day on day over months. And for me, it took me six months before I was feeling better. Right. When I say feeling better, it meant you know I wasn't getting the frequency of chest infections and asthma attacks. Okay. And by the time I saw Richard Costello, I came into him with a big book of results and was like, look, I know you have my medical files there, but here's, here's my lifestyle files. Yeah. I'm like, this is what I've been doing. And he says, yeah, look, I know Patrick. I know the method. Sure. And I chatted to him for a bit. And at the end, he was like, look, you know your body, Leo. He says, so what, what, what do you want from me now? And I says, well, I want to come off my medication. He says, well, look. He says, that's okay. He says, you know yourself, so come off it one at a time, but always keep it there. And if you ever need to go back onto it, go back onto it. 
So and from about from from when I saw him, it took another six months of weaning <coughs> myself off. Yeah. So from when I originally did the boutique method, it, it took me eighteen months, and I was symptom free and medication free. Wow. Yeah. And you say you say it took you eighteen months to come off the medication entirely, uh, and you said it took you six months to start noticing the effects drastically, where symptoms were reduced. Yeah. Was it even faster than that when you initially tried these methods? Well, I, I noticed differences as I went along, but I'm giving you the big milestones of, of what I noticed. But here's the okay. thing with breath training. We breathe between 24 and 30,000 times a day. Wow. That's how often we breathe. Yeah. At a standard rate of 12 to 15 breaths per minute. Okay. Okay. Now, if you're doing breath training and looking at, you know, improving whether it's asthma rhinitis sinusitis anxiety um even depression symptoms have been have been lifted with it uh, there's a huge array of diseases which are linked to your breathing system sure if you're expecting results with one session or with a week of sessions or a month of sessions then don't bother starting okay because you're committing to something for the long term sure you're committing to something for life yeah and you're going to be in enough pain or you're going to really appreciate the long game to go, okay, I'm in this for a while. Sure. And this is something that I say to my clients now. And like I give a consultation with people and I'll be like, they, they want the quick fix. They want the, the 12 week transformation. They want, you know, I have one, <laughs> I have one client, uh, a lady and she was, a uh, she was a pro fighter. I'm not going to say the sport, but she was a pro fighter and she came to me for rehab and she's trained with some of the best trainers worldwide. Sure. Uh, some of the most well-known ones, both in Ireland and internationally. Yeah. And uh, so I was quite, you know, I was like, she's what she doing coming to me in some senses. That's fair. Um, because I hadn't worked with many high profile people at the time. Yeah, I guess you. And I said, she says, look, I'm going to give you a month and uh, we'll see how we get on. And I says, no. Okay. I says, I want seven months. Right. She looked at me. She was like, what? I says, seven months or I'm not working with you. Okay. And she goes, why? I says, look, I will make you out a plan for the next seven months. I says, but that's how long it's going to take you to rehabilitate your body and get it back to scratch. Yes, yes. And this is what you need. If you're only going to commit to a month, then what What are we doing? You're wasting my time and wasting yours. Okay. And that's how it is. It is. That was her particular case, but with clients very often, that's what it is. If, if you're, if you have a disease, it's going to take you time. You didn't develop it overnight. No. It's like the person who's five stone overweight. They didn't put the weight on in a year. No. That weight took 10, 12, 15, 20, 30 years to put on and they want to see results in 12 weeks. That's and guess what? It's ridiculous. You'll drop a stone. You might drop two, but if you want to do this for life, you got to put in habits that are going to take a lifetime. Yeah. Sure. So, so how important then, Leo, is is nasal breathing in that process of building those habits for sustained long-term benefits for breathing specifically? So, a lot of what you'll hear about nasal breathing nowadays comes from Patrick's work because he's been such a prolific um, expert on it. Yeah. and he, he's built himself and his business around the Botecchio method and now his auction advantage right yeah so if you hear those words it's coming back to him and it's coming back to dr Botecchio's work okay uh which uh, is absolutely amazing look at the end of the day if you're not breathing through your nose then you're breathing inefficiently right so would you eat a carrot through your nose no no why <laughs> You've no teeth there, right? No. You know saliva to break it down. You've nothing yeah. to prepare the food for your gut. Yeah. Okay. So what do you have in your mouth that prepares air for your lungs? Do you have uh, hairs to catch dust particles in your mouth? No. no. Do you have uh, mucus like that produces snot in your nose? Is that in your mouth? No. No. Do you have turbinates that also help to filter air? No. Do you have nitric oxide that's produced to help kill bacteria and germs and also dilate blood vessels and airways 
to help air get in there? No, you have none of that stuff in your mouth. Okay. The only reason why we mouth breathe is it's a stress response and it's an expression of emotion. Okay. If okay. you are mouth breathing every day, just <sighs> well, then you're breathing inefficiently. Right. And it means that you have lots of opportunities to improve yeah. the whole health of your life and performance, no matter what sport you're in. It's just sure. a fundamental part of living. Sure. And can you maybe just talk through, like, because I, I started becoming aware of nasal breathing when I attended one of your workshops. That mm. was actually the first time that I realized well, number one, the benefits of nasal breathing, but number two, becoming consciously aware that I wasn't nasal breathing when I should have been. Mm -hmm. For example, when I slept, mm -hmm. I would wake up with a dry mouth. I'd wake up probably feeling more tired than I should because of this inefficient way of breathing. Well, how do you feel now that you're in nasal breathing? Now that I'm nasal breathing, it's it's a game changer. No more dry mouth. I feel fresher in the morning. Um, it's a game changer. But I, I'd be interested to hear how you trained yourself, just for the listeners, to do that, and, and what methods you've you taught that that I obviously used. Yeah, the how, but I mean, we we, we will talk about different strategies here. But it, the only thing that teaches is experience at the end of the day. So it's only if people take this information and go mm, and put it in practice. Sure. That's that's where the real learning comes for, for people. There was a book written in 1882 called Shut Your Mouth and Save Your Life. Right. Shut Your Mouth and Save Your Life. Wow. Uh, George Caitlin was his name. What he did was he he looked at death rates and, and disease rates in London during the 1800s okay. and found that a lot of children were becoming very badly diseased and dying very early in London. And this is nothing that he wasn't looking at sanitation and, and that area of things, which he acknowledged, but this is more like um, changes to posture. This was, uh, I'm going to call them psychiatric, psychiatric disorders or mental diseases, right? Okay. <laughs> Different language for it. Right. Uh, and then what he did was he went out around the native tribes of the Commonwealth. So he went to India, went to Africa, went to the South Americas, and he found that they had none of these diseases, none of these postural deformations. Yeah. And the kids were, once they were born, they were living, you know, to the age of 10, unless they had an accident. Okay. Okay. And he was like, what? Is but the more he researched, the longer it went on through the 1800s, the more he found that the native tribes were becoming like the babies in London. And he was right. like, what is going on here? And there was a couple of different influences that fit in there but yeah. the the crux of it was that he identified was when the children started to mouth breathe at night during sleep yeah that's when all of these diseases and um, postural deformations came in wow so when they started to mouth breathe at night that's when the health of their system collapsed that's now crazy. we now know from research there's a huge link between uh sleep disordered breathing and sleep apnea yeah. we know the links between sleep at or between sleeping and, and health itself like if you're not sleeping well forget about your eight hours sure forget about your tech if you're not sleeping well and waking up refreshed yeah and alive yeah. after a night's sleep well then there's something going on and it's yeah. really really bad for your health sure and one of the essential parts that is not eliminating blue light it's not making sure you're in a back cave. It's not all these habits around it. It's actually how are you breathing when you're sleeping? Yeah. And when you change your nasal breathing when you're sleeping, like you experience, yeah. all of a sudden you're like, whoa, like even if it was only four hours, it was the best four hours sleep I had. For sure. If it's ten hours, you feel fabulous for it. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and the reason is because the mouth breathing puts you in chronic mouth breathing. I'm not yeah. talking technique, but chronic mouth breathing puts you in a stress state. So if you're in sure. a stress state, your body's not recovering. And if it's not recovering during sleep, well then, how the hell can you get healthy? Yeah. Makes makes a lot of sense. And it's it was interesting um, because like 
breathing through your nose during the day it's it's something that you have to be consciously aware of but then when you're sleeping you're that's obviously the main hurdle that you have to overcome then is right how do i nasal breathe while i sleep mm -hmm. and it was you you referred me to this special tape yeah that you put over your mouth mm -hmm. and i think the analogy you use is kind of like the training wheels whenever you're learning to ride a bike yep so it's not long term it is a bit intimidating and it's a bit kind of scary taping your mouth before you go to sleep but having done it over these last few weeks i can honestly say that that fear goes away as soon as you have a good night's sleep <laughs> Do it does Ab absolutely like the, the proof is so. in the pudding but here's the thing with mouth taping is First of all, don't do it if you're under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Sure. And don't do it if you're panicking putting it on. Because okay. there's no point. Because right. you're not going to train your brain. What we now know about all of sleep research is what you do during the day is what influences what happens at night. Okay. Okay. So when you get daylight into your eyes, the times of your meals are you exercising are you getting outdoors these all have such a major um factor in how you sleep that they set you up then for your sleep at night okay so if somebody is anxious or panicking about the, the mouth tape in their night that's why i teach day breathing first and yeah. then i go to night breathing afterwards sure. but if you're not and you're you're mentally saying you're happy there, there's little to no risk in it like it's been done since the 1970s there's i've never heard of any reports internationally of anybody having any uh any difficulty whatsoever with it the yeah. worst that happens is that the tape comes off in the middle of the night yeah. and we use i use 3m micro pore tape you get it on a pharmacist yeah. it's a paper tape um it costs you four euros for a roll that will last you a couple of months i mean yeah. it's such a it's such a cheap and easy way to train yourself to better sleep. Sure. Uh, it's just that getting over that fear factor in your head of doing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I just wanted to kind of segue on then, Leo, to... Because everybody has their own definition, but I'd be curious to hear what your definition is of health. What does health mean to you? <laughs> Essentially, to break it down, it means having enough energy to do everything you have to do in the day have some fun and have more energy left over okay for me that's what it breaks down to for for everybody on a daily basis so think of that right if sure. you like you're an endurance runner you want to go uh you want to run marathon de sable yeah you want to yeah. run uh, ultra marathon races yeah so you have to have enough energy to do that yeah enough energy to live your life so to come home talk to your friends talk to your family do work if you if you if you work a real job yeah i know, I know. <laughs> and then have a little bit of energy left over sure so that when you wake up in the morning you're fresh and ready to go again sure it's a simple uh very simple definition but that's my definition of health okay um that that's what i use and that they're the principles uh, and, and it's built then off principles of okay how do i build energy in my system yeah. yeah how do i build in those foundations and that resilience and that's part of what i was testing when i did run go on to run the the dublin marathon sure that whole thing was based on a, a couple of different ideas so this is 10 years after i healed my asthma i was training i i had been a fitness instructor for years at that stage i then went on and started studying strength and conditioning uh, I studied a lot of rehab, did a lot of work on nutrition, a lot of work on prison. I, I went through that whole industry and did a lot, a lot of research and study and mentoring with people. Sure. And a couple of things came about. It was, I had realized at that stage that one, not many people were teaching breath training in the world and breathing wasn't a thing in the world. So I was like, hmm, well, I know about it. Yeah. and i've been doing it long enough and i noticed with my clients that it was uh spare change left on the table in other words it was a, a part of training that they i wasn't teaching them but i knew a hell of a lot about yeah. and i felt that it would make a big game changer for them so i went back to my qualifications and then i said right i'm gonna put it to the test 
And I says, what do I want to do? I says, do you know what? Sure. I've always wanted to run a marathon, so why not? Let's do it. <laughs> but I had no interest in running <clears throat> miles. I didn't have the time of day. I had a family. Yeah. Uh, I worked a lot. I, you know, I was busy and I was like, I had no interest in running miles. Yeah. So I says, do you know what? I'm going to run it on breath training. And that's what I did. I did breath training and then I looked after my joints with some gym training. And that was it. That was my training. It was breath training and then it was gym training for my joints. Not not for my energy systems in that sense. Not okay. for killing it and conditioning. No. Just for my joints. And that was it. And then, but what I did was VO2 max tested as well. Uh, okay. To see what was going on. Yes. So I worked with a guy, Sean Canan there in health, My Health Matters. And he tested me and he was like, his initial reaction was like, oh, what? Who is this lunatic coming into this? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, because he works with a lot of triathletes, a lot uh, of marathoners, yeah, yeah. a lot of endurance sports people. Um, and he, he is, the scientific approach is his, ta- has his, ha- is his hashtag. And he was like, this dude, are you serious? <laughs> but I did the VO2 max and I finished and he goes, well, how do you think you got on? I says, I don't have a clue. I have no benchmark. I just yeah. did my best. And I was like, right, well, um, you got a 52.1 score. I was like, oh, what does that mean? He says, no, that puts you in an elite range for VO2 max testing. Wow. No, you're not. I, he was like, look, if you, if you really wanted to be an Olympic level or, you know, you'd be up around 70. Yeah. But anything above 45 is considered elite. Wow. He was like, that's pretty impressive, Leo. Now, what happened during the, what was really interesting during it was I asked him to mark on the sheet. I said, I was going to give him a thumbs up. Yeah. I says, when I give you the thumbs up, I want you to make a mark on the sheet when exactly that happens so it's okay so that thumbs up was me switching my breathing mm. in the okay. middle of the test right. so you got to remember with a vo2 max test yeah. it's you're slow 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 building 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 faster higher incline faster higher incline faster higher incline so it gets gradually more intensive until you can't run anymore yeah so when i felt it in my system I switched from nose breathing to nose mouth breathing, which makes sense if you think of it as a as a vent, as a hole for allowing air to pass through. Your yes. nose is small, your mouth is big. Yes. So you push the small vent as hard as you can, and then you open up the vent, you open up the windows and let more air in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Sure, makes sense? sure, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So I call it the vent system. I mean, um, Brian McKenzie over the US and, and the Art of Breath guys call it the gear system. So, when I was doing that, I, when, when we marked it down in the VO2 max test, we found that I had a direct, a direct relationship to my production of lactate. Okay, in other words, I was switching from being predominantly aerobic with oxygen yeah. to predominantly anaerobic, which means using lactate as a primary fuel source. Now, that struck a massive chord with me because I was like, ah, that makes sense, Leo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I must make sure because I haven't trained like a traditional runner, I can't just step onto that uh, pavement and run 26 miles breathing like an ass. I can't breathe through my mouth because then I'm oh. going to go anaerobic sooner. And I'm not conditioned for that. So that's why I tape my mouth to make sure that I stayed. Whatever pace I did, I would stay nasal breathing the whole way, okay. which means I'd always have oxygen in my system, which means I could always produce energy in my system. Because uh. remember, energy isn't just about food. Oh. Energy, the production of energy is about the quality of your food going in uh. and oxygen. Okay. Okay. So that you, makes sense. you just made sure that you were feeding your body that entire time with energy through nasal breathing. Yeah. Okay. So oh. went and ran the whole thing. That was fine. I'd recovered within three days and competed in the judo all Ireland the follow the following week. That's mad. And got a bronze. <laughs> so my body That's was mad. fully, my system was fully recovered within three days from a marathon. Crazy. And that was because I learned what energy systems are. I learned energy systems training. Yes. And that's what I maximized in my breath training was how to regulate my energy systems. Sure. Now, N equals one and people might say, oh, you know what? That was just you. Does that apply to everybody else? 
So this, there's no papers on this. There's no uh, research on this. There's no books in this. Sure. This was my own little <coughs> experiment, and as far as I know, I was the first one out of any SNC coach to find this stuff out. Yeah. And so I said, you know what? I'd been training a GA team uh, for the previous two years. So I asked 10 of the boys to come and test with me. And they came and tested and we found the exact same results with those guys. It's amazing. So you're not a, you're not an entity then. It's No, it's not. It wasn't just about me. And then what happened was about six months later, uh, Brian and the guys uh, over these guys are over in California who yeah. are used to training you know world class athletes and Olympians and then yeah. they started because I was in talks with Brian at the time yeah. they started to produce similar data with their athletes and we're like holy moly this stuff is incredible it's amazing so when you come back and say what are the foundations of health they are breathing and movement that's what your human body is designed to do. Breathe and move. Nothing else. Sure. So uh, if you're missing breathing and movement, you are, again, you're, you're as I say, is, is you're, you're not picking the low-hanging fruit. You're not picking the easy things to do to make a difference yeah. to your health and performance. So that, that was the next point that I kind of wanted to segue on to is like, what role do you feel that movement plays in health, but also in human performance. So specifically movement? Yeah. Okay. Remember the other part of the, the marathon was that I trained my joints. Okay. Right. So that was the, the focus of my training was to move better, to be free, flexible yeah. Yeah. for what I needed to do. And then to use the muscles that I wanted to use to do the job I want them to do. Yeah. In other words, my glutes did the work on my glutes, not my low back. Sure. or my hamstrings so what that means is you got to learn how to move first okay all right and that's why i did i did the chi running course um i did that and i realized that that was just pilates in motion and that the same principles apply is just movement through running yeah. now if you're not moving well you're going to use muscles other muscles to compensate so the cool thing about this human body of yours is you're going to get the job done any way you can. Right? It yeah. doesn't matter. Like, you set yourself up <clears throat> and you believe in that and you practice, you're going to get to the end line. Yeah. Now, there's two ways you can get to the end line. One, you can do it with compensatory patterns or two, you can do it efficiently. Yeah. All right. Now, if you do it with compensation patterns, which means you got really crummy technique yeah. and you're not a good mover of your human body, Sure. Or you got injured and you decided to keep running through that injury. What happens is the body uses other muscles to do the work. Wow. So, for example, it happens quite often with people who sit down a lot. Yeah. Okay. Which is a modern life or drive a lot is that their hip flexors become really, really tight. Yeah. Yeah. And they become very strong, which means the low abdominals, which should be helping to control your pelvis go weaker they get taken over by the hip flexors yeah now the hip flexors lock in then and lock in that position right which then means that glutes turn off in inverted commas because that's common language right and now your hamstring gets loaded up sure and that's why so many athletes in part do a lot of hamstring issues okay it's and, and what you'll do is you'll go to a therapist and they'll be like oh your glutes have switched off your glutes don't switch off <laughs> But yes, they're not working effectively. And the yeah. question is why? You can do all the banded walks. You can do all the glute bridges you like. Yeah. But it won't solve the problem. No. And the problem is higher up the chain. It's the root cause. It's the root cause. And do you know what the root cause of a lot of movement issues is? The diaphragm. Ah. Because every single postural chain from your toes to your head runs through the diaphragm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that means chains that go from your the sole of your foot, up your calf, up your hamstring, into your sacrum of your spine, up your spine, runs through your diaphragm. Wow. You got cross body ones that go from the inside of your groins, your adductors, go through your glute med, cross over 
from the hip to the low back in the QL and then go up the opposite side goes through your diaphragm. Okay. So all these chains run through the diaphragm. And if your breathing is off and your breathing mechanics are off, yeah. guess what? None of those chains work well. And you can do all the banded walks and get all the foam rolling you like, but you're not addressing the root cause. So breathing and movement are massively interlinked sure. with each other. Sure. And you need to make sure that you move well so that you breathe well and you need yeah. to make sure that you breathe well so you move well. Okay. Okay. You do that as foundations, no matter what your sport, you're going to put yourself in a position to perform at your best. Sure. So it really comes down to breathing better to move better. And moving better to breathe better because breathe better. again, okay. if, if your muscles are supple, <clears throat> your rib cage is supple. If your spine can move and wave and twist and turn, yes, that will benefit your breathing. Yes. So it needs both. That's why breathing and movement for me are the foundations of the human body. That's what we're designed to do. Uh, absolutely. And if we just introduce then the final point that I wanted to cover which is cold exposure because <laughs> you had it today <laughs> because i had it today <laughs> i'm still shivering yeah um what role do you feel that cold exposure has in i guess building control over the breath and then ultimately you know then moving better and overall ha ha what what role do you feel cold exposure plays in how does in it fit into the puzzle? Yeah, where, where does it fit into the puzzle? Where does it fit into that? Because it's getting popping, all right. Picture. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, look, uh, why do we need cold exposure? Research would show that we now spend 90% of our time indoors. Wow. In a house, in an office, in a car, indoors. Yeah. That's a lot of our lives, whereas we're built to be outdoor people. Sure. Now, when you're outdoors, what do we do? What did my mom do? I used to wear a balaclava when I was a kid just to keep myself warm and several jackets, right? That's yeah. that's how Irish people were brought up because, oh, it's cold outside. You better you better wrap up. Yeah. Which means essentially you're at the same temperature, room temperature, as when you're inside. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So sure. now you're living your life at the same temperature. So the systems that you have innately in your body that govern and regulate temperature in your system are not been challenged. Right. And if they're not been challenged, you go, do you know what? I don't have to do my job. I'm going to go on a little break here. I'm not, I'm not going to regulate this heat. Which means that over time, when you step outside, all of a sudden, what's cold is really bloody cold because yeah, your yeah, system yeah. doesn't, your cardiovascular system isn't working well. Your nervous, is, none of it's working well. Sure. Okay. So this is where cold exposure as a training method comes in. Yeah. Is okay, let's jump in the Irish Sea. Let's, for me, jump in an ice bath which is a, a controlled environment. Yeah. So it does several things. One, you feel it, boom, straight away. So you know your ner it hits your nervous system straight away. So you're able to tell your response to a heavy stress within seconds of being in there. Sure. That's the one benefit. So it now builds resilience in your body when you use it well from a nervous system point of view. Okay. It shows you how to handle stress. Yes. Another thing it does is it trains your cardiovascular system. Yeah. You get into an ice bath and all of your extremities, your hands and your toes constrict. They go white. Yeah. They go uh, because all the blood shunts into your heart. So now you've got cardiovascular training. So again, if you're not training your whole cardiovascular system, which you don't do in endurance training, by the way, for running. Okay. Yes, you're training it, but not all of it. Uh -huh right you now immerse yourself in cold and then you get out heat yourself up immerse yourself in cold get out heat yourself back up you're getting a cardiovascular workout sure where you're training the capillaries of your extremities and your whole body sure now you can begin to see the crossover into endurance training you can control your nervous system which means helping to control your muscles and your mind yeah you can control your or you can improve your cardiovascular system, yeah. which again makes you a better endurance athlete. Sure. Okay. It obviously helps in recovery, which is why athletes traditionally do it is by decreasing inflammation. Yeah. But the last one then is it trains the, the mind and the breath. Okay. Sure. So your breath is a barometer of stress. It, it's your measurement. Yeah. So you get into a nice bath and... <laughs> So 
So if you can connect to your breath as you get in there and yes, now what you've done is been able to take a hold of your situation and be in charge, even though you're in the depths of pain. Sure, <laughs> which you are. Sure, <laughs> sure. <laughs> and so there's a couple of yeah. crossovers there to endurance training. Okay. For sure. If you want to sure. break it down even further, not only cold, you also have heat training, heat and cold. Yes. And now you're going to train heat in your system. And what is the first thing that happens when you've been running for a while? You start to get hot. Yeah. As you start to get hot, you start to get fatigued. Sure. As you get fatigued, you start to <laughs> breathe more. As you get hot you get fatigued you breathe more then what hap happens you get tired when you get tired your technique goes out the window your mechanics change okay. then you're running down injury sure sure so you can train these between breath training it specifically yes between mechanics training them specifically yeah and then between cold exposure training the regulation of heat specifically okay and that's why I developed the class that I'm about to launch locally here, awesome. which is breathing, training, and exposure yeah. to teach people both from a health point of view. Yeah. And then once you have that foundation, you can apply it to your sport so that then you can go and perform better in your sport. Uh, absolutely. There's just one last point that I wanted to touch on just because it stood out on my Instagram feed. Not only do you do the cold exposure as part of your training, but do you think there's another element there where just from watching the Instagram video there last week where you're not only doing the cold exposure, but you're doing it in the morning time when it's dark outside <laughs> and it's early and it's miserable. Do you think there's a certain element there where you're facing down fears also? Like where does I the mean, mental strength come in to the cold exposure? Well, cold is a fear. Sure. Who the hell likes to get into the cold? Not me. Nobody <laughs> likes to get into the cold. Like, you never... If you're not used to it, you never want to get into the cold. Yeah. And that goes the same for um, having a conversation you don't want to have. Uh, it goes the same for taking on an event that is going to challenge you to the depths of your core, where yeah. you've got that fear inside you. All of it is fear training. Sure. And, by the way, that's what asthma is, is in some circles they call it the disease of fear okay. because if you think of what it happens let's say a dog comes up to you rah, 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 you go <gasps> that's yeah. what an asthma attack is <gasps> 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 that, that's <clears throat> that's the breathing pattern of fear yes one of them so okay as long as you can regulate your breathing you can then regulate how you think in your state Yes. And that's what cold exposure training does is it trains you to be resilient. It trains you to be okay. So the reason yeah. why I was doing it lately, first of all, I haven't done, uh, before Christmas, my focus was on uh, judo training. Yeah. So I still do judo. And uh, so my focus was not on cold exposure. So okay. I was just getting cold showers in the morning. That that was it. Which yeah. is, a, it, it, that alone for people who are new to it is, is a different animal. Does the job. <laughs> But since over Christmas and that, I've been building in, and I went in the new year, one of my main things that I've been doing is one, I've been building this local class as a, as a creative project. Yeah. Two, I'm building an online program, which is going to be called Project Breathe, which is going to take people through. There, there's methods out there in breathing. There's, there's many methods out there, but nobody's yeah. pieced together a framework of how this all fits together. Sure. And then made it simple. So yeah. you said in your intro, I studied 50 techniques. So that's great, 50 techniques, but how do they apply? How do they come together on a plan to make you a better person? Sure. And that's what Project Breathe is about. So I'm awesome. at the final stages of that. And what I needed to do to develop these, as well as have a family, as well as train my current clients, as well as get yeah. my own training in, I needed a lot of focus. Okay. So what I decided to do was first thing in the morning is to give myself some cold exposure or get in an ice bath. Yeah. Because one, when you get up, what does everybody want to do? They want to turn over and go to bed. Yeah. So I was like, well, if I can turn this into a challenge for myself, yeah. 
and do this. I don't do it every morning, by the way. I do it uh, three mornings a week. Okay. And I go, okay, so if I can get up and get into an ice bath first thing in the morning, I can take on my day. Sure. So it's my way of giving myself a mental challenge because at the minute, my challenges aren't physical. No. Mine are mental getting my work done yeah. for what I want to do and my passion in life. Oh, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. So I needed a mental, a physical mental challenge Okay. for me. Awesome. That wouldn't take up a ton of time. No. That isn't going to mean that I'm going to have to purchase something or go off somewhere crazy to go do it. No. But that I have right on my doorstep. Boom. Yeah. So that's why I said, okay, I'm going to get up. But, you know, the reason why it's 6 a.m. is because <coughs> I'm in work. You know, I leave the house at 7. Yeah. So I have a window of 20 to 25 minutes before I really have to get dressed and ready and everything done and get out the door, right? Sure. So this is right. I'm going to get up. You know, which means now uh, once I wake up in the morning, I got to get out of bed. Yeah, and I got to get out of it. bed. And so my challenge is not actually getting into an ice bath and how long I can stay in there for. Oh. Nothing to do with that. Oh. My challenge is getting up, getting out of bed, yeah. getting into the ice bath and doing that quicker. So instead of doing it for 50, instead of it taking me 15 minutes of messing about to get into that bath, can I do it in 14, 13, sure. 12? Sure. Can I eventually get straight out of, wake up, Boom, out of bed, okay, togs on, out I go, into the ice bath. Do it. Because that fear is there, man. It's there for everybody. So are you extending the times that you do, or it's just no. it's just a matter of getting in faster? That's that's how you're is Get, raising getting each out time? of bed, stop procrastinating, <clears throat> yeah. and do something that's going to really challenge you physically and mentally first thing in the morning. Awesome. I could pick, I don't know, I could pick up, do pull-ups. Yeah. I could do push-ups. I could say go for a run. Yeah. But all of those things, yes, they're physical and mental challenges, but they take time. And our sure. path takes you two minutes. Yeah. After two minutes, the benefits become um, there's a law of diminishing returns, especially yeah. if you're trained at it. Sure. So mine is just about getting up out of my cozy bed. Getting into I'm the bath. Do something hard. <laughs> yeah. Do it Goggin style. For sure, for sure. <laughs> that's awesome. That's that's why I love the plank so much. Is because it puts you into that state of suffering very, very fast. Mm. So like what could take a run an hour can take the plank a few minutes. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, I'm with you on that one for sure. Absolutely. The only thing I would say is as well is when you choose those exercises. <laughs> Make sure you choose an exercise that's going to benefit the mechanics of your body or sure. how you move. For example, if you picked a squat, right? What's a squat going to do? It's going to contract your hip flexors and your quads. Yeah, your glutes. and Yeah, it's a good workout for that, right? But, 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 they are the movement patterns that you do in running, that you yeah. do in sitting, that you yeah. do in driving. So you're actually not going to benefit your whole body. Yeah. So you got to pick one... Um, like a, a back support, a gymnastics back support, which is like that tabletop position. Oh, sure. It's like a reverse plank. Those, those are tape, but, but what it will do is one, it will help your mechanics. Okay. It'll help your posture. It's going to help your running. It's going to help your mind game. That's when I pick techniques. Yeah. I, I got to look at the whole body and go, this is why I'm picking this. Whereas a plank yeah. isn't going to do that for me. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Because it trains the strength of the whole front of your body, and that's already strong for me. Okay. Personally, I need something, maybe it's a side plank, because right. that's weak in my body. Okay. So, or, so really understanding your body and choosing those exercises to maybe strengthen weaknesses. Yeah, so you're not just, you're not just <coughs> thinking, oh, this is for mental strength. Yeah. No, this is, this is actually going to hit a couple of different areas. This is a perfect exercise for me. Sure. And that's what the breed train exposure is about is... When I bring people through training, it's it's connecting the breath and movement. Yeah. It's also experiencing movements for you to strengthen up those several aspects of your body and your life is your mind, your body, all of it together. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, look, that's uh, that's definitely giving me a lot of food for thought. I'm sure uh, anyone <laughs> listening is definitely done the same i just wanted to transition then leo into some lightning round questions if you're up for that nice for that. let's do it perfect so the first one that i have is imagine you could enter a time machine and travel back to day one of embarking on your journey to mastering your health 
What is the number one piece of advice you would tell yourself to set yourself up for success? Okay. <clears throat> well, I don't remember the first day because it was three, I believe, is what I'm told from my mom. In other words, what I'm trying to say here is the pain that I went through as a kid with yeah. asthma was the start of my journey. You, okay. uh, pain is one of the biggest motivators in life, whatever that is for you. And if you eliminate that pain out, if you just say, oh, I, I, I don't want to ever experience that, then you're not going to get the learnings and the experience from that. So okay. without having childhood asthma, I would not know what I do. I wouldn't be speaking to you today because sure. I wouldn't know about movement and breathing and everything that I do. Okay. So I now embrace pain and move through it. Yeah. So what would I say to myself back then is, hey, Leo, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Awesome. Keep learning. And one day this is going to benefit you. You will, you will find out the reason why you have been through all this. And that there is a greater purpose for you going through this pain. And so, it's all good. So really finding really finding meaning in in all that suffering and pain that you had to go through, not by choice, but just by Absolutely. By you, 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 your choice is is to uh, choose to look at it from that point of view, that there is meaning in it. Yeah. And that there is learning to ga- to gain from it. Okay. Or turning your back on it and going, Oh, do you know what? Poor me. Yeah. Poor me, life is hard oh i'm very sick now extrapolate that out over a lifetime and i think we all know where we're gonna end up yeah not somewhere not somewhere too good i'd imagine well i mean the, the quote is is um you know you either suffer um suffer the pain of progress uh no suffer the pain of discipline or the pain of regret yes the choice is yours I think I heard Greg Plitt say that actually. Yeah, that's an old school one. I don't know where it comes <coughs> from, but that's a lot. A lot of army people use that, right? Sure. But that's essentially saying the same thing. Awesome, love it. Next question then: If you were only to read one book for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? I'm looking at your vast collection of books over there now. I mean, I, I could pick so many different ones because they sing from a different cultural perspective. Sure. I grew up in Ireland. Um, it was to pick one book, I'd say it's, it's a Bible and understanding it because there's wisdom in there that applies to today, no matter what sport you're in and what you do. Yeah. That, that book has been rewritten a billion different ways and taken aspects a billion different ways with different language and cultural references. But, uh, and I, by the way, if I was from... The Middle East, I'd probably say the Quran for the same reason. If really? From Japan, I, I'd say a Shinto book for the same reason. Okay. There, there, if I was from India, I would say one of the ancient yogi texts for the same reason. Yeah. Just because I think humans, even back then, you know, love is love. It's still there today. It's still a powerful motivator. And it's it's like, yeah, they, they, there's huge wisdom in those books that awesome. still apply to today. Timeless. Timeless, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I love it, for sure. Uh, if you could have dinner with any three people, dead or alive, who would they be and why? Can I include my family? Of course. Because <laughs> essentially, that's who I'd have, is I'd have my family around me. Why else? I mean, it's great going talking to all the heads of the world. And I've, I've answered this in a, in a podcast before as well. Okay. But um, who do I want, like, I've chosen to be with my family. Yeah. Uh, my wife, I've got kids, so it'd have to be five people. I couldn't leave one of them now. <laughs> but <laughs> that's, that's who I want to share my life with. That's awesome. We, talk, we talked earlier on ourselves about, you know, what does freedom mean to you? What does yeah. success mean to you? Yeah. And yeah, that's what it is to me is, is being an even better person for them. Awesome. You're a family man. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Perfect. I love that. What quote do you live your life by? And why? The one that comes to mind is I accept a hundred percent responsibility for my life. Extreme ownership. Yeah. Um Giacco is yeah, he's, he put it that way. It was Jack Canfield that I originally learned it from, um, which is, 
everything you you have choices. You always have a choice. Yeah. Always, always, always. And sure, your choice then becomes is I can take ownership of that choice yeah. and its consequences, or I can not take ownership and let life dictate what happens to me. Yeah. Now, having said that, I do believe that there is a, a purpose in a bigger picture that we don't understand. Okay. Um, and we'll never understand until we've lived through that period. So shit happens to you and you don't know why it's happening. Yeah. So I do try and let go of that and go, this is my choice. I'm going to go down this path yeah. and let's see where it takes me to. I can always change the path later on. Okay. But I take ownership of those choices at that point in time. The good stuff and the bad stuff. 100%. It, it's all just stuff. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> it is also determined whether it's good or bad. It's Irish people are great. Like, uh, oh, jeez. It's cold out there today. Oh, yeah. The weather is terrible. It's yeah. terrible. Is it, is it, it's just weather. That's all it is. The Swedes have a saying, which is, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. It's the meaning that you give to the things that are happening that yeah. determines if they're bad or good. Yeah. yeah. Or more easily, I would do one, which is, uh, I'd be going in and, and, and going into work and they'd be like, oh God, it's awfully cold out there. It's freezing. Says, but look, when you get a nice bath first thing in the morning, everything else is warm. Sure. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's true. And that's, that's why I train in the morning. And that's why I, I push myself in the morning is any problem that seems to arise during the day it's usually not as unpleasant as the suffering that I've experienced in the morning with the cold showers getting up you know at god hour of 5 6 a.m and and yeah just just really experiencing and embracing that suffering like the rest of the day a bit a big quote that that kind of ties into that is preparing for war and enjoying the peace and that's that's really what it is. <laughs> I give you a, a, a <laughs> I love that one because it reminds me of another one. Yeah. So there was a, a book of samurai. Yeah, judo is my sport, so I I go a lot back to that culture. Yeah. And I was training when I lived in Canada. I was training a um, psychiatrist. Okay. Uh, in the gym, and uh, he was an awesome guy, and. Uh, I, could, I couldn't crack him. Do you know what right. I mean? I couldn't get him to, to move the way I wanted him to move because, yeah. sure, he had all the mind games. He knew all the tricks. Right. So one day, I don't know what happened. Like I was training him eight, nine months and uh, he was actually on the elliptical. And this guy's in his 60s, by the way. This guy's on the elliptical. And he was like, oh, I want to go a little bit more. And I was like, okay, I'll go a little bit more. And then I was like, okay, that's enough. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you're, you're fine up and I said, no, I'll go a little bit more. So he, he pushed up beyond. I was like, okay, well, this is your max that you've done before. So, Oh, yeah, that's good, that's good, that's good. So I said nothing. I was just like, well done, that's great. So, but I observed him and I could see that actually he'd been holding back on me for a long time. But now I had the evidence that he was holding back on me for yeah, a long time. Yeah, yeah, So, <laughs> he comes to me the next week. And by the way, as a, he was also into a, a, a keto. So we had a lot of right. common ground. Yeah. Which is another Japanese martial art. And he had sent me this book. Sure. So, the following week we would come along and I says, okay. We are going to go interval training. We are going to, this is our interval that we're going to do. Yeah, this is yeah, our intensity yeah. that we're going to do. And he was like, but that's more than I've ever done. I says, yeah, but I know you got it in you. <laughs> so we were doing it and he was like, this is killing me. I said, no, 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 no. And then I came out with the quote that he had from the book, which was the samurai cry in the gym and laugh on the battlefield. I love that. <laughs> I love that. I'm Obviously Jim is no one. but that was the, the direct quote from the book was the samurai cry in the gym yeah. and laugh on the battlefield and I quoted that as he was oh. in the depths of his and he looked at me and I just laughed and he was like it's amazing you you I'm gonna kick your ass Leo <laughs> no hold back like, I was like broken yes no more hold back in those sessions for sure <laughs> oh it's amazing yeah I love it I love it so accept accept your choices everything is a choice except responsibility for sure well that segues lovely on to the next question is what are you afraid of what am i afraid of now yeah uh, not becoming the person i feel i'm supposed to become okay that's the easiest way of putting it. not fulfilling 
like in, in yogi in my car not fulfilling my dharma potential potential is another one yeah. but I'm not extending that into the future I'm saying that into right here right now okay as well as into the future okay I feel that I have my life path to now has taught me a huge amount of things yeah. that a lot of people aren't that aware of for example the breathing for example combining breathing and movement just as a simple act of you know I don't understand people when they say oh my mental health no it's your health yeah. I'm sorry but you cannot separate mind from body it is one and the same sure <laughs> so I look at that on like I just learn some simple tools which it's about you doing this stuff yeah. it's not about a therapist coming in it's not about uh, needing to go outside of you to find it it's it's that that doctor is inside you sure and it's about spreading those tools with other amazing people in the world that have found similar things yeah. and they're like look this is what this is how the human body works at a foundational level yeah. and then it's later on, on after that awesome. so that's a message from my career that I want to get out there and go um, that I feel really strongly about that I just think that it's, it's time it's time it was known and yeah. that the secrets are not secrets anymore sure and that you don't need to travel all over the world to find this out but we're in oh. a beautiful age that it's it's all there awesome it's all there I love that for sure so if, if people really knew you they would know that finish the sentence if people really knew me, they would know that life is for living. Have fun. There we go. Have the crack. <laughs> like, but again, they, they, there's so much more in that. I do believe life is for living. Have fun. But if it's for living, you have to live, which means you have to have the energy to live. You have to have the human body to live. Yeah, I love that. So, yes, ha and have fun in everything you do, in your training, in your sport, in your family life and the arguments that you're having like be able to laugh at yourself and just go yeah. no maybe i'm wrong <laughs> take <laughs> your life seriously but don't take yourself too seriously yeah yeah be the best way to put it sure no, i love it what would you choose for your last meal what would i choose for my last meal <sighs> it's a tough one <laughs> Yes and no, like I, I, I'm just like, my last one, does that have to be my last? I love food. <laughs> <laughs> I know, me too, man. <laughs> me too. You know, I, I would go for a traditional Irish Sunday roast dinner. Lovely stuff. Uh, and then I would finish it probably with a homemade chocolate brownie, wash it down with a nice glass of Pinot Noir. I would have some sparkling water on the table. I would like that. That meal would extend for about nine hours. <laughs> You'd really save so, a lot. Well, yeah, because yeah. that's a part of food is is social, right? Sure. So I'd sure. be eating that meal on my own, yeah. but it would be the whole experience of the meal. But it would be based around that idea of an Irish Sunday roast yeah. dinner. Yeah. Love it. Awesome. Well, the last question then for the lightning round is: What does living an ultra life me to you and you can interpret ultra as exceptional incredible extraordinary that's really that's really the definition of the podcast what does it mean to me it means being happy now yeah yeah being joyful now being present now and building towards a vision that I'm excited about. Awesome. I love that. Well, listen, Leo, uh, it's been a fantastic episode for me. Like, I've learned so much. I'm going to go back and listen to this and, like, break it all down. Cool. Um, but just in terms of, because obviously we've discussed some of the things you're working on, some of your bigger projects. Like, where is the best place people can find you? And learn more about innate strength and also like yeah just give us a bit of an insight as to what those projects are and how people can you know find out more yeah so my, my website is innate-strength.com sure. innate-strength.com 
everyone will come up you'll see that i have methods and stuff in there that that'll all be changing in the coming month anyway what i'm building and then on instagram is where I mostly am which is i am leo daniel uh is on is on instagram what i'm building is i'm building an online training platform uh and the first thing that i'm building out of that is project breathe which will take people through about 12 weeks of programming where it will teach them the framework of breath training yeah and then how to build it into their life and their sport okay so project breathe is about breath training for athletes so it yeah. starts at that foundation level and builds up uh, and that that looks at a, it it's not about one method this is about principles so i look at the principles of breathing and then integrating that into life and training and it will cover everything absolutely everything awesome. um and that's what i'm really excited about because i'm i've looked at different methods i've spent the time going and i'm like there's there's nothing looking at principles here yeah so that's that element uh locally then i'm up in drada and i'm also in malahide in dublin and what i'm gonna do is actually out of my own home you can see i got a cabin here in the back garden i am going to start to uh host a local class uh, for breathe train and cold exposure yeah. and that's going to be a weekly one which is going to be a bit of fun it's about building a community of people who just are awesome and looking for that little bit extra in life that bit of community yeah. of like-minded people sure. and who really want to place those foundations of health at their core yeah. health and performance at their core and from there we'll build out to to workshops and events um, but they are the essentials that I'm going to put in under my own brand now coming forward. That's awesome. Look, it's uh, it's an exciting time. And yeah, I'll definitely be uh, one of the first first people to be turned oh, off to Oh, you're one of my first guinea anyway. pigs here on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, Did you enjoy it? <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it, it just felt like, like I've tried other methods and I've found some of them quite overwhelming, especially if you're new to them. But with the stuff that we did today... It kind of left me feeling chilled out and relaxed and that's that's kind of how i want to finish a session i don't want to finish a session like ready to run through a wall mm. is how i was explaining it to you explaining it to you earlier versus with today's session i kind of felt i felt reborn is a way that i discussed it and that's that's really what i want to be able to incorporate into my daily life because like you said when it comes back to sustainability sure enough if you want to go run through a wall that might do this trick for for some sort of event that you're going to go do but you really want that sustainability and and incorporating the movement and the breath and making sure that it's yeah making sure there's a mix there which i think you did really well um i think that's going to be the solution to to long-term health for cool. sure cool awesome time perfect you, right nice one leo right thanks again for listening guys and uh see you in next week's episode